The SABC has confirmed that members of the South African National Defence Force have been deployed at its headquarters in Auckland Park. The public broadcaster says the move was made to protect its premises and staff in light of the recent unrest in Gauteng and KwaZulu-Natal. The army was deployed to several national key points across the country during the violence and rampant looting last month. Earlier on, we spoke to the SABC board chairperson, Bongumusa Makatini. The National Defence Force has been deployed by the Commander-in-Chief to protect all national key points. We had a situation in the country in July that necessitated the protection of our infrastructure and our employees. And um, based on what management has reported to us as a board, there is no evidence that has been provided that the soldiers were marching in the newsroom. They may have been walking around because for them to be able to guard these, pre these premises, they needed to be clear about all the exits and so forth. But it is an operational matter and if there is any evidence of soldiers marching in our studios I would like to see that evidence it must be submitted to management and sure the management will do what is necessary and report back to the board because you see Thomas, there is report as I speak to you in some of the, the the media that actually they were indeed in the in the newsroom and in fact somebody says there was even a joke about may I please use your rifle or something like that I would really want to see evidence in this thing because we, we also should not pace a, a position rather um, a, our soldiers as lunatics. Yes. People that will just walk in here and interfere. I would want to really know if they did march in, what did they say? Who did they sp speak to? Where is the evidence to that? And because at the end of the day, if such happened, it will need to be properly investigated. But we should never create an impression that our National Defense Force uh, employees are lunatics that will just walk in and interfere with your day-to-day -day operations. Meanwhile, Police Minister Peggy Kele says he is not aware of the reports that SANDF were seen in the public broadcaster's newsroom. Kele was speaking following his visit to Lamontville, south of Durban, a short while ago. I don't know if they are allowed to enter the newsroom. It's, I know SAPC is one of the key points. Uh, depending what information they will give us, I don't have that information that they've entered the newsroom. I don't, if they did, I'll have to find out because uh, the, the police, the soldiers, as they operate in these particular places, they operate under the guidance of the police. Maybe uh, the police can report to me why they would come to the newsroom. If if indeed they did. So to discuss this further, we are joined and will be shortly by Aubrey Shabalala, who is the General Secretary of the Communication Workers Union. But uh, joining us now is Hannes Duboson, who is the President of Bamao. A very good evening to you, Hannes. Thank you so much for speaking to us. Uh, so we'll get into the nitty gritties in just a moment, but I just want to uh, pretty much strike while it's hot. You've heard what the uh, Minister there of Police was saying. Uh, he says, I don't know if they are allowed to be in a newsroom. And uh, the question, of course, also arises is, were, were members of the police under whose uh, guidance uh, that the SNDF uh, are, are serving or deployed at this point? What are your thoughts about this? Good evening. Um, yes, the information that we have clearly uh, suggests that um, th at least three um, SANDF um, soldiers armed with rifles was on the third floor of the SABC, that is where the newsroom is located in Auckland Park. Um, they were not accompanied by any police um, and they were there in the building. They've been seen by uh, several independent sources um, and uh, we heard the SABC saying they want evidence. The SABC is a national key point. They have cameras all over so it is very easy for the SABC to go to that CCTV footage um, at the time when those people were there and then to uh, establish whether who is now speaking the truth or not. Mm. Um, we are of course concerned about the fact that um, the SANDF was there without police uh, but was there in the first place. 
The SABC is a national key point. The, the government is entitled to protect its national key points, but there is no need for soldiers to be in the news. Okay, Hannes, so, let me just stop you there because I want to understand this. As you say that uh, it is uh, government's discretion to deploy members of the police and SNDF at a national key point. But in this case, would the SABC board or top management not be appraised of this? Would they not be told of the deployment of the SNDF? Because we know at first uh, that uh, the SABC management denied their knowledge of their presence. Well, well m most certainly that is something that, that, that should happen. Um, so uh, the second thing is that, that, that as a courtesy, staff should have been informed that uh, they are deploying uh, the SANDF to the national key points. But, and this is the but, they are there to protect the building. They don't need to see entrances and ex uh, exits of the SABC from inside the building. If they are posted outside the building, they can exercise that particular function in a proper way. The, the, the problem here is what was the interest in the newsroom as such, so that they then went particularly to the newsroom and walked around there. That has created a lot of um, anxiety with journalists in particular, um, seeing armed soldiers uh, in the newsroom or at least at the floor where the newsroom has been located. Um, and the question was, what are they doing there? on the floor that the newsroom has been located. So we'll speculate on what they were doing there in just a moment, but are you as Bamao concerned that when staff members report to management that they witnessed and interacted with members of the SANDF who were armed in the newsroom that top management would, th would then say, where is the proof? As you say, if they really wanted to know, the information is naturally at their disposal. They should simply request CCTV TV footage. But why should it come down to this? This is the question that I'm asking. Is it not concerning to know that there have been members of the SANDF armed who are in the newsroom? Well, we, we, we can speculate. It's one of two scenarios. Either they knew they were there and they denied it, or they didn't know. Both of that is of massive concern. So if they, if they knew that, that the SANDF was there inside the building and they're denying that, that is of concern because what are they hiding? If they didn't know about that, that is of even more concern because how would the defense force be, be deployed to the SABC, enter the SABC building, go up to the newsroom on the third floor, and they don't know about that. So both of those scenarios are of massive concern. Hmm. So I'm wondering here what can be done to protect staff members if proof is then being sought uh, from either pressure or intimidation. As we mentioned before, the SABC management at first night, knowledge of the presence of the SANDF at its buildings is now saying, well, if they were there, they probably were doing reconnaissance. But I think for a lot of people, the question is, are people justified in saying that it creates an environment of a fear for people who are supposed to report freely without fear or favor? It's absolutely so. Um, it, it creates that impression. Um, remember, we are coming from the previous week where we um, have engaged the SABC on a spy clause that was in uh, employees' contracts, and in particular, the contracts of journalists. And we have raised serious concerns about that. Now this is following where we see that there are um, armed soldiers in the, on, in the newsroom and um, that easily could create the impression that uh, the government and even the defense force are watching you as journalists. Uh, you don't have to say anything. Your mere presence there, totally out of place, totally unwarranted, unjustified, I would even say uh, illegal, uh, being in an SABC building, the pub public broadcasters building, armed with rifles, without being accompanied by police, all of that most certainly has created, it's not whether 
whether we think it has, we know it has created um, that impression by journalists that we are not free, we are not independent, we are watched by Big Brother. They've even sent the army to come and, and, and tell us that we are here and we are watching you. That's the impression. Whether that's, that's um, justifiable or not, um, but that is most certainly the impression that has been created. I might just, might just add that the SABC has, after we raised the issue of the spy clause, uh, which is an interception clause that has been um, put in all employees' contracts, that, that the board, in fact, agreed to have that removed. Um, and we are uh, happy that uh, the board has made that progressive move to remove that particular clause. The question, of course, is how did that clause end up in contracts in the first place? Mm, and that's what I wanted to ask you. Let's talk about the issue of uh, illegality, which you mentioned. What are the protocols with regards to entry and the presence of weapons inside a national key point, in this case, specifically the SABC? Yeah, I've, I've been uh, involved with the SABC for quite some time. I know that the protocol is that no one are allowed to take a firearm inside the SABC. If it's a, a handgun, there are uh, facilities where people can hand in their handguns. Uh, they are not allowed to take in any weapons uh, inside uh, the SABC as a public broadcaster. And of course, one can understand why. Mm. So we've been talking about the bigger picture, the SABC saying that members of the SANDF are here to protect its building as natural key points and staff members. I want to talk about the timing of the deployment, and you can correct me if I'm wrong here, Hannes, but what I know and what I've seen is that members of the SANDF arrived several days into the unrest in Gauteng and KwaZulu-Natal. So help us understand this well um my understanding they were seen last week uh, for the first time um, last week there was no incidents of unrest uh, and riots in the sabc now that of course raises another question and look we are not into conspiracy theories but the suspicion has been created by the fact that the sabc first has denied now they're saying, well, they were there. What are they doing there? Is there something that the SABC must tell the public? Why after the looting, after the violence, soldiers are being seen there, they are entering the building? So, so that is the other concern that we have. Isn't there something that the SABC should tell the public out there as to why after the looting has stopped, that soldiers are still there uh, being deployed at, at these uh, specific uh, key points. Hmm. Anas, I, I'm going to ask uh, the team to put up a tweet by Transport Minister Figile Mbalula on the incident, and I want you to tell us what you think about it. But um, this, of course, also comes on the back of the police minister saying that he was unaware that members of the SNDF were in the newsroom and he's still awaiting a report that they, he doesn't know, as I mentioned, that they should be in the newsroom. But the question is, what should happen next? So let's first start with that tweet. Let's see if we can bring it up by Figile Mbalula, Minister Figile Mbalula. Okay, we're going to come back to it, but okay, let's just start with this. So if it is found that members of the SANDF were indeed inside the newsroom without um, a police escort, so to speak, then what should happen? Well, I think the board should um, explain that to the, to the public, that uh, what, what is, um, why were those soldiers inside the building not accompanied by police, being fully armed with automatic rifles. Um, and of course the board must be held accountable for that uh, specific action. It cannot be that we, that we have a public broadcaster that has been 
so to say, infringed in this manner, where people are just allowed uh, to to enter. We know that the that the SANDF are not law enforcement officials. They are not trained in law enforcement. That is why there are were specific instructions by the police minister that they must at all times be accompanied by the police. So how they entered into that building most certainly needs a very urgent, deep investigation, and there needs to be an explanation from the. SABC board as to why these things are happening under their watch. Okay, so let's go to that tweet. We do have it up as you can see. That's Minister Figil Mbalula responding to the SABC where it confirms the presence of members of the SNDF. And he's saying, very good decision. Why do you announce it though? Uh, we know that the rebels intended to take over the broadcast. I think the first is, why do you announce it? Should it be a secret? from a security perspective, and if so, what is the rationalization? Secondly, um, that second part that we know that the rebels intended to take over the broadcaster, that is quite a chilling thought. Well, well, absolutely. It seems that uh, there is information out there that has not been uh, shared with the public, uh, which is that the, if a minister uh, of this country says, well, the rebels want to take over the broadcaster. That is very, very serious because the public broadcaster, um, he who controls the public broadcaster controls information um, and mass information. So, so, so that is of concern. And, and I think the question should be asked to the board, were you aware or are you aware of any attempts that um, was aimed at taking over the public broadcaster, the SABC. And why has that not been then communicated to the general public out there? Um, so whether it should have been announced, I think it should. Um, there shouldn't be secrets around that. Uh, if there's anyone that uh, wants to take over the SABC, the SABC must be protected with all force and might that uh, the security forces of this country um, has. So um, yes, it should be communicated. And anyone who intends to take over the SABC for that matter should know that they are going to walk into serious problems. Uh, but um, it seems that there are information out there again that has not been shared. Okay, finally, Hannes, what should happen going forward? If the SADF deployment continues, should newsroom staff be engaged on this, the purpose thereof, and to what extent? Um, and naturally, their questions may not be required, but how should this engagement occur and to what end? Well, I think the bottom line is that soldiers and the police must be kept out of newsrooms. Um, they must not be allowed there unless they are there um, investigating something specifically. We know that uniformed staff will not necessarily investigate issues and in particular, and specifically, not the defense force. So, so we, we should protect um, the, the, the SABC, we should protect the independence of the SABC, and we should ensure that SABC journalists are allowed to report um, without fear and favor, as the SABC themselves are saying. Um, and there should be measures put in place by the SABC board to ensure that something like this will never happen again. Okay. Thank you so much for speaking to us, Hannes Duboson. He is president of Bamawi. We were hoping to speak to the General Secretary of the Communications Workers Union, Aubrey Shabalala. Unfortunately, we've uh, been unable to reach him, but uh, we will continue uh, speaking about this uh, from a security perspective in just a moment. And um, we have to also advise you that SABC management has been asked to uh, comment so far. We have not uh, received a, a response to this effect, but we will continue to keep you informed.